Good morning, Monday morning, 26th, 26th of April. Morning, Mags. Morning. What a beautiful, beautiful morning. Right, it's Monday and I'm sure everybody's busy. Morning, Liz. Right, Monday morning, 26th of April. Uh, follow the 12 part 8 this is the ordeal and facing our shadows yet again and before we can go into tomorrow's part of it so some questions have come back actually prematurely about this because they didn't understand it first time round I didn't answer them morning Francis ok so um. They didn't answer it first time round. So this is the part in the movies where the hero has got to slay the dragons, okay? But how I particularly like to see it is in Star Wars where Luke Skywalker is fighting Darth Vader and he takes off Darth Vader's mask and who did he see shining back at him? He saw his own face. Now... What is it that keeps all of us from our mountain top? What is it that keeps all of us from our mountain top? What is it that keeps all of us playing small? What is it that inhibits us from sharing our creative genius with the world, right? It's fear. It's a dragon. It's, it's fear. But what we do is we think that it's something out there that holds us back, that restricts us. We think it's something out there that we're afraid of. But in actual fact, the dragon lives within us, okay? So, I was having a chat yesterday with a guy, uh, a guy, a sponsor in the NA, and basically he's came out of a relationship that he's in. He's been following these, he watched it yesterday and then gave me a phone. So, basically, what he was in rehab, okay? He was in rehab and he was getting himself clean from drugs and alcohol, predominantly drugs, right? And he was sneaking about with this girl who he just sort of met. So, there was some flirting going on. Now, that flirting, whilst he was in rehabilitation, was a... Uh, that flirting was a distraction for him, right? So he was being distracted by that, right? And then he's came out, he's got his own place and she's got her house. Now, his house is scarcely furnished because he's just beginning his life. This girl's got a few children. She's a woman, her house is more homely. So he finds himself going down there at the weekends, etc, etc. However, it started to become slightly destructive. And he made a choice to step back from that, right? What the conversation was about yesterday was... Love was what we were born with. Fear is what we learn. Right? Morning, morning, Francis. Don't know if you're still there. Yeah, we wave. Get us a wee wave, right? Love is what we're born with, and fear is what we learn, right? Now, somewhere in our development, we chose separation over connection. We chose fear. We allowed the door for this demon to come in, and we didn't actually deal with the boogeyman. You know, can I, can I sleep with the light on tonight and all that? So there was a boogeyman there, and what we did was we used the light when we turned our bedroom light on to distract us from the fear of the boogeyman, right? Because we didn't want to live in the shadows of our mind. So generally what most of us have done is we've repressed those feelings, we've repressed those fearful feelings, right? So what I was chatting to this guy about was at some point in his development, 
he stepped away from wholeness, he stepped away from unity, right? And his natural state became loneliness. He was a very lonely child. He was a very lonely adolescent. And it was possibly that loneliness that made him go towards substances. Because any time he took substances, that feeling went away, right? Now, all he's done, and all we do, it's not just him, all we do is we press pause on those empty, shallow, fearful, lonely feelings, and we distract ourselves. Be that with materialism, drugs and alcohol, buying clothes, shopping, internet shopping, buying music, whatever it might be. For the purpose of this conversation, it's came through a relationship with a, with a woman for this guy, right? Now, he told me he was going to be splitting up with her prior to it. And I said, all I'm going to say to you is, beware of whatever it was that she was distracting you from is going to come knocking on your door as soon as you split up with her. So that was about three or four days ago. The conversation yesterday was that pain, that sacral core wound pain that he was experiencing because they no longer had the distraction of her, but he also no longer has the distractions of drugs, of alcohol, drugs and alcohol, right? So why am I talking about this? Because this part in the story is what's called the ordeal. This is where uh, King Arthur, you know, and uh, they pull the, the sword out, the rock. Um, this is where you get your gift, right? This is where you receive your gift. This is where you, you, you get your, you get your, um, you get to experience some kind of transcendence, right? So, rather than it being a mythological sword, rather than it being any great gift, of winning the lottery. The suggestion I'm making for the purposes of this is the biggest gift that you will ever get is looking in the eyes of your shadow and loving it and accepting it rather than resisting it, repressing it. So anything, we create our dragons Nothing is going on outside of us. The war that's going on is going on within ourselves. Morning, Maz, how you doing? Um, so, the gift that this guy got yesterday was seeing that what he had created was an aspect of himself that he wasn't willing to look at. So this is where we are projecting out into the world. Donald Trump, I don't know anything about politics, right? I'm not, I'm not about to say that I do. But that guy gets a lot of projection, right? Now, whether he is an idiot or he's not an idiot, right? Whether he is narcissistic or he's not narcissistic. But see the people that are... Look how cold it is this morning. See the people that are saying the things that they're saying about him. I wonder if they've got the courage to go inside and go, I could be like that. That could be me. Right? That is our greatest gift for humanity, is to be able to look and see that the shadow aspect that's showing up in our lives is actually ourself. And rather than pre re repressing it, today is about accepting it, accepting that shadow is yourself. So if your partner is lazy, your partner is greedy, your partner is unavailable, your partner is whatever, violent, your partner is bipolar, schizophrenic, personality disordered, whatever projection that you're placing upon him. Now maybe he has a medical condition for the way that he is, right? And maybe he needs to seek medical help for that. But you've got a responsibility to accept that those behaviours are also you. A lot of people don't agree with this, but... He who has no sin cast the first stone. 
how can I take the how can I take the speck of dust out my brother's eye when I can take the plank out my own? Right? This ordeal that we face in this part of our journey, it comes round for a second time, it comes round in step three, and then it's come back round again. So the ordeal that we face that we think we face which is outside of ourselves, is actually an ordeal that we face inside of ourselves. okay? Fear is debilitating, I get that. Courage is not the absence of fear, but an ability to manage your fears, okay? So, the only way that we can get courage is through taking small steps towards our fear, and pushing the boundaries of our comfort zone. It's like a muscle. It's like if you want to train your biceps, you do rip curls, whatever it is that you do, you start to train it. If you've been paralyzed by fear and you're constricted by fear, the way to manage it is by training it like a muscle. So look at the fear, look at what you're creating, take steps towards it. Now, what many new age people or personal development coaches that I'm hearing is it's like, fake it till you make it. Kill your fear, kill your ego. And Carella quite rightly came in and said something yesterday. Although I'm very aligned with the way that she put it, perhaps verbally I never came across in that way. We are never going to get rid of our fear. We are never going to get rid of our ego. So should we battle it? Should we fight it? Should we try and kill it? How much energy is that going to take? My suggestion is this is where we love it. This is where we look at the fear in the eye and that disempowers it. It's like all demonic forces want to be released back to the light, right? This is my theory, right? All demonic forces want to be released back to the light. So really somebody that does something bad, a wee kid steals a Mars bar, a wee kid steals a Mars bar in a shop, right? That's wrong, okay? So that force, that energy, the thief, that came up to take that Mars bar when he knew that it wasn't right. Actually, that part of that little boy, that aspect of that little boy wanted to be caught, okay? But he wanted to be forgiven and not punished. But what our society does is it punishes and reprimands and therefore increases feelings of guilt, which then sets up a repetition, which then sets up the behavioral pattern to begin again. So it's the judgment that we have upon it which causes people to continually re-offend. We have to completely look at it. Look at Portugal. Since 2004, when they relaxed the drug laws and um, illegal substances, has drug use went up? No, it's went down. Has drug-related deaths went up? No, they've went down. Okay, the system that we inhabit in Scotland, certainly the UK, drug-related deaths are starting to go through the roof. Why? Because we've got such tight constraints upon it. We've got such judgments on it. Now, all the people that are using alcohol and substances, and I speak about that because that's the majority of my work, right? They've got a deep feeling of shame, okay? So the reason... Somebody who's been using substances 95% of the time, in my experience, there's been a trauma happened in their childhood, right? So let's say that was abuse, molestation, something like that. So the police come and protect the child when he's six or seven years old for that which happened to them, okay? But that pain never really gets dealt with. That systemic pain is buried inside that little guy, right? And then 20 years later, that little guy finds substances as a road out. And then what we do is we chastise them for a behavior that they're doing in order to take their pain away. It's not working. So, ordeal, facing your dragon. It's learning that the dragon that we face is not outside there, it's ourself. Fear, we weren't born with. We were born with love. We learned to fear. Right? So if we can learn something, we can unlearn something. The way to unlearn fear is to start to take small tentative steps towards it and stretch the boundaries of your comfort zone. Okay? And the other thing here is, really important, is rather than seeing that you're fighting a battle out there, right? that you're actually fighting a battle inside. When Luke Skywalker was fighting Darth Vader and Darth Vader took his mask off, 
Luke Skywalker saw his own face reflected back to him. So any villains that you've got in your life, any villains, any people that you're projecting on he is a thief or he is a traitor or he is aggressive or he is a addict, whatever the projection that you're placing on them, don't use them as a hindrance. Don't use them as a force to hold you back. Use them as a place for you to grow and own it, right? I had a judgment that, I, that an ex-partner of mine was controlling. And I thought, well, I'm not that controlling, right? I went, I'm pretty laid back. And then I started digging in deeper, right? I, start, I was telling somebody about this recently. I started digging a bit deeper, right? And then I moved into this courtyard, right? And you weren't, like, you're not supposed to, you're not supposed to park. There's, like, parking spaces. You're not supposed to park your car outside the houses. You're supposed to park in these communal parking spaces, right? And I noticed that I started getting myself revved up. I started getting myself revved up about where these people were parking their cars. So I then started going, wow. And then I found myself about half a mile from home, starting to rev myself up about where the people may have parked their cars before I get in to give me something to get annoyed about. I was actually creating things for me to get annoyed about, right? So who's got an issue with control? So rather than fighting that, accept it, bring it to light. Anything we repress, we give power to. Anything we hold behind a door actually strengthens it. But see the minute you open the door to it and you accept it and you surrender to it and you look it in the eyes and you love it for what it is, it then starts to dissipate. It's like throwing water over the witch and the Wizard of Oz. Right? So this part of the journey is the ordeal. It's facing the shadow. It's the fight with something outside of ourselves. But fundamentally, the fight that's metaphorical in the external is a fight that you're having with something that's going on in your internal world. Morning, Anne. Morning, Nicole. Morning, Vicky. Hope you're all well. It's a beautiful Monday morning. Can't wait to start. I really can't wait to start work this morning. Um, looking really forward to it. So, I'm really excited about work today. It's like Monday morning. Yes, let's get it going. Right, so this is the ordeal. This is facing the shadow. The dragons that we go to slay outside are not dragons that are inside us. It's a place where we take responsibility and accountability that everything we see in our world is a reflection of ourselves, whether it's good or bad, and we have to pull back the projections and own it and integrate that part of us into ourselves. Because unless we do, what we're actually doing is we're empowering that part of us, that demonic, that self, selfish, that addictive drive that's inside us. It's like, I'll stop drinking, but I'll hold my breath and keep the addict behind the door. No, that just empowers it. It's like, let go of your nose, breathe, breathe, accept that you've got a compulsive behaviour and the compulsive behaviour's been set up not as a hindrance, but actually as a healing that's just got out of control because there was a pain inside you that you didn't think that you could face and you started using alcohol and substances as a way. Or... As I chatted with a guy yesterday, we use anything as a distraction, anything to distract ourselves from how we're feeling. For this guy yesterday, it was a relationship. He was using his relationship with this woman to distract him from his pain. Now, had he had he faced his shadow, the shadow for him on this instance is loneliness, deep rooted loneliness, never feeling like he belonged, sitting in a room surrounded by people and not feeling that he fitted in. Right? Imagine the pain of that. That pain, that wound that he had carried through his childhood and into his adolescence and when he picked up a needle or whatever he was and he shot it into his arm and he felt whole and he had that cuddle again, he felt complete, right? But 25 years of drug use, did the, did the fracture, did the pain, did the sacral pain, did the core wound of loneliness, not feeling like he belonged, feeling like he was an outsider, did that get healed? Did the drug addiction and alcohol addiction heal that wound? Absolutely not. It just pressed pause on it. 25 years down the line, he gives up alcohol and substances, and all of a sudden, somebody presses pause on the core wound again, and that feeling starts to come back up, and it's, ah! And then a girl texts, hey, big guy, how are you? Oh, takes that feeling away a wee bit. Takes that feeling down, suppresses that feeling a little bit for a while. Before you know it, they're getting funky, they're meeting up, they're having coffee, they're staying over at the weekend her lush and warm home compared to his bachelor pad because he's no longer at rehab, he's no got a lot, he's setting his life back up again. It's two very different extremes. One feels warm and cosy, the other one feels cold and bleak. 
But the one that's warm and cosy, now that he's entered into the relationship, is it really that warm and cosy? Is it really worth putting himself through all of that for that? Right? But basically where I'm going with this is, what are we using as a distraction to stop us from our pain? Because see, our pain, our pain's not a bad thing. Our pain's a beautiful thing that has to be looked in the eye, accepted, forgiven, surrendered, let go, and move beyond. And that doesn't mean to say that you become enlightened and start walking in water floating. There'll be another. It just keeps going round and round and round. It's a circle. It's like the Buddhist wheel. You come round, you get a lesson. You either do or die. You get through it or you don't. And you keep going. And then that lesson comes up at a, at a higher volume. And you either get through it or you don't. You go back round the wheel again. Lesson comes up. We keep facing the same lessons, but sometimes they just the knot gets ch the knot gets heavier and heavier at our door. Until we've actually learned the lesson and then as they say in the Buddhist wheel, we've reached enlightenment and we are beyond it and we've learned the lesson for what we incarnated into this world for. Not that I'm saying I believe in reincarnation, but here we go. So I hope that's been helpful before tomorrow. I'm going to show you this little tree. I just keep seeing this tree with this wee eye on it. I wonder what would happen if we all found our way through the centre of that eye and went in to the narrow gate. Have a blessed day, everybody. Have a blessed day. I look forward to talking to you tomorrow about a really great bit. And we'll be finished this up at the end of the week. So, have a fantastic Monday. Look after yourselves. Be safe out there. And things that you don't want to see in other people. Mirror, mirror on the wall. Who's the fairest of them all?